Hello, I am Thomas Farrington, founder and president of FIN, the Prostate Health Education Network. I am pleased to introduce you to the FIN TV program, A Conversation with Ken Griffey Sr. FIN TV is an important part of our national rally against prostate cancer. Ken Griffey is a former Major League Baseball player with the Cincinnati Reds, known for his exceptional skills on the baseball field, one of my favorite Major League stars of all time. Like all black men, Ken was at high risk for prostate cancer. And today, like many high risk men, he is now a prostate cancer survivor. Ken visited FinTV.com and watched a number of our programs. The program that touched him most was the Survivors Roundtable discussion because he could easily relate to the experiences of the survivors and their stories. He immediately registered for the Fin Survivor Network and included a note that he wanted to get involved in Fin efforts to outreach and help other men. I traveled to Orlando, Florida to talk with Ken about his experiences as a prostate cancer survivor and to actively involve him in our Fan TV outreach efforts. This conversation with Ken Griffith Sr. demonstrates how the words of survivors discussing their experiences openly can touch other men in a positive manner. Moreover, it shows the power of these words to motivate others to join in the outreach efforts. You will find Ken an engaging person who is open and anxious to help others through his experiences. He understands that all survivors are in the same boat in our battles against this disease. And he is aware of the enormous unmet need to educate those men at high risk. He is also a man of action who is now making his voice heard on this issue as part of the Fin Survivor Network. We need and urge all survivors to join with us in this war on prostate cancer. Fin's education awareness outreach success is attributable to commitments of men with a wide variety of backgrounds and experiences at all socioeconomic levels. Working together, we can save lives, improve the quality of lives, and impact on public policies. I invite you to watch our program, A Conversation with Ken Griffith Sr., and please visit FinTV.com for more information and to join our Survivor Network. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Farrington with you in beautiful Orlando, Florida with Ken Griffey Sr. Ken Griffey, as many of you very well know, is a baseball star with the Big Red Machine of the 80s. And uh, now Ken Griffey Sr. is a prostate cancer survivor. And I'm glad to have him with me this morning. And we're going to talk about prostate cancer, uh, some of our experiences, and uh, the need to outreach and uh, help other men. Well, that's most important is to help other folks. Uh, I think that what I'm finding out as I, I go through these different situations that I've been going through, that a lot of people don't talk about it. Ken, when you contacted us, because uh, Ken uh, contacted Finn and said, I want to work with you, I want to join Finn's effort to outreach. So uh, thank you for contacting us. Well, it, it was a situation It was kind of Surprising or a thing was uh, a friend of mine or my doctor mm -hmm. from um, uh, uh, Aventura, Florida. He uh, said there's a website I want you to go on and look at. So, and I was going through a lot of stuff by myself, you know. And the biggest thing is just, you know, when you have to do this by yourself, you want to talk to other people. Now, the only other person I talk to about it is actually my wife. Yes. Uh huh. And it was kind of difficult to do that because I don't know if she understood a lot of the things that I was going through. Absolutely. And uh, she has to go through the same things, but at the same time, she's looking at it a different perspective mm -hmm. as I was. So I wanted to find out more information. He told me to go on the website, Finn. So I went on the website and I sat there and it was up to about three or four o'clock in the morning. I was listening to all the all the people talk about what they were going through, all this, and it was all the same scenarios that I was going through. So, same type of thing. Same thing, same thing. So, and then to hear the wives talk about it mm -hmm. was a big plus because Good. I wanted my wife to listen to some of it too. So, uh -huh. I, uh, this morning was the first time that she got, we were able to get on Finn, and I told her where I was going to meet you today. So. Uh, she looked at it, and she was probably going to get on it this afternoon and look at it a little further. Very good. Ken, tell me something about your background in facing prostate cancer. When were you diagnosed? I was diagnosed uh, pretty close to about two years ago. Uh-huh. And uh, I had to go through a lot of biopsies. Well, for, first of all, I'll give you a little, little um, 
background in terms of how all this transpired. The first thing was that my uncles, I have six uncles, and they all died of prostate cancer. Six uncles died six of, of prostate cancer. Yes, and I had a doctor that I, I deal with, Dr. Craig in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. and he was very aggressive of trying to find out. So first thing we went through, as soon as I had my first physical with him, mm -hmm. we went through the PSA. Mm -hmm. We went through um, all, the, all the things, that, you know, to find out mm -hmm. if, I, if I had prostate cancer. I mean, you go through all those things in terms of the regular physical and right, all that, right. where the doctor has to go and you know what I'm talking about. Right, absolutely. And, right. um, you know, which to me, most men, and especially athletes, are very macho about <laughs> anything about the of that type. Of, yeah, <laughs> that, they don't like that at all, you right, know. Right. So I went through all that and uh, nothing wrong. So at one point, my, pro my prostate PSA was like 1.9. And then six months later, I had another physical because he needed to check my, my diabetes. Right. So it went from one nine to eight. Mm. So, and it was only six months, you know. One point so, nine to eight. Yeah. And how old were you then, Ken? Uh, I was, uh, what am I now, 57. 57, 57. Okay. So I'm looking at that and he said, well, we have to do the biopsies. Yes. And the biopsies were, I mean, whatever you want to do. And the biopsies are tough. You mm -hmm. know, the first one I was, well, Right. The second one, I told them they got to put me to sleep. <laughs> There's no way I'm going through this. So the third one I went through, you know, I went through three biopsies, three biopsies. before, you know, they finally found that it was moving. Right. You know, and uh, then that's when my doctor said, well, we got to get this taken out. So mm -hmm. whatever, whatever your plans are within the next month, let's look at having surgery. And I found a doctor uh, through a friend of mine, Robin Coles, who's uh, with the Pittsburgh Steelers mm -hmm. in the 70s linebacker right and he's a good friend of mine he's the one that told me about my doctor dr congrad down in adventure florida and that's where um i went to have the surgery mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. but uh, so you chose surgery yes uh yes. and uh did you look at any other treatment options at the time well we we discussed about four or five different uh, ways to go about it i mean but they're looking at this saying i'm still a young man yeah, absolutely right and uh, the other the other uh, other only other option actually was the seating you uh -huh. know and he said well it, you usually guys are 65 to 70 anywhere in that type of range you usually get the seating mm -hmm. but you know since you're a fairly young man you got another 20 25 more years to go he said mm -hmm. the best way to go which is the new the new technique is the robotic surgery the robotic surgery yeah uh -huh. so that's that's the way i, I went mm -hmm. and i had the uh, whole prostate taken out mm -hmm. you know i'm an eight-year survivor and uh, i know when i was diagnosed it's uh the whole family uh, went through mental anguish. Uh, it was something that uh, I did not face alone. It was uh, the whole family faced that. How was it with you? Well, it was the same. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I was more worried, being, being an athlete, ex-athlete and stuff, I was more worried about the family, right. how their reaction was going to be or how they would take it. Especially my, my oldest son, who's still playing baseball, yes. junior. Uh -huh. And uh, that same week, to be honest with you, uh, both hit myself and his mom mm -hmm. was diagnosed with cancer. You know, oh. she was diagnosed with uh, rectal cancer, uh -huh. and I was diagnosed with prostate cancer this, the very same week. The very and same And he's week. trying, you know, this was in July, and he's trying to play ball, and yes, uh, I yes, knew yes. that that scenario would be kind of tough on Absolutely. him. Absolutely. So I told him to make sure, talk to his mom, see what, right. you know, how she's doing, mm -hmm. and uh, then he, he, then I said, well, don't worry about me because, from what I understand, mm -hmm. this is the most important thing that we're going to ever talk about is that. We caught it early enough, right. so there's no right. problem in terms of getting getting uh, work done or getting right. uh, surgery or whatever right. I have to have done in order for me to survive. One of the uh, the things that uh, that I know as a survivor, you have to look for ways to uh, gain strength. You face challenges of different types. Now, as a baseball player, uh, <clears throat> that uh, that the challenge of being a a, a a professional athlete, not the challenge, but overcoming. Uh, the obstacle and being a successful athlete, did that help you face prostate cancer? It did. It okay. helped me. Uh, being a successful athlete, uh, but the, I think the major thing was uh, the family support. Gotcha. Uh, my wife, uh, this is my second wife, uh, mm -hmm. her name is Valerie, All right. and uh, she has been very, very helpful in a whole lot of things. I mean, she, she was looking up all kinds of stuff on the internet, helped mm -hmm. me out, but you know, it's, it's basically when you have that kind of support of your family. My youngest son 
was there the whole time. He, mm -hmm. When I went through the surgery and everything, he was there. I have a young younger friend that's actually I call him. He's my adopted son. His name right. is Derek Hutton, who okay. kind of runs my foundation for me. Uh, Derek came down. He was there. So everyone was there. And like I said, when I when I come out of surgery and I was sitting there, they're they're all sitting there. They're, talking to me and right. we're talking about other things right. but I think most important is, I think is, is the family backing you or there, there, being behind there you. Is nothing there's like nothing the else. No, support, there's nothing uh, like when, it. When no, you face nothing a challenge like such as this. Well, especially those challenges. Right. You know, so. right. One of the things that we've been trying to do is to, is to make men and, and survivors and their families understand that uh, we can play an important part in saving other men's life. And uh, that for is, is we have an expertise. It's something that we didn't ask to gain, but going through facing cancer, selecting the treatment, uh, provides us with an expertise that can help other men. And uh, I was so pleased to hear from you. Tell me what prompted that. Well, what prompted it, you know, like I said, was that I had my doctor in, in Aventura, Florida, told yes. me to go online and look at this website. And when I did that, I was looking at the website and I went through the different, you know, the government uh, scenario where you have government uh, people behind uh, the right. organization. Then I started looking at a little further down in the website and I seen where it said cancer survivors kind of testimonials. Right. So I looked at those and there was about, I say there was about eight, nine, nine yes. guys uh -huh. on, on that uh, thing and I listened to all of them, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what, you know, made me, you know, contact you. And talking about, but you know, getting further into it, I had a friend of mine who was, like I said, Derek Hutton, who's yes. my director, yes. uh, got me involved with, um, as we say, it's the uh, National Prostate Cancer Coalition up in D.C. Yes, and I think you know a little bit about. I know them. about the NPCC. And they, yeah, and they actually uh, used me as an honorary chairperson to, to contact or to outreach a lot of people in terms of getting them understand what prostate cancer is all about. So. Mm -hmm. We were going through all these changes, and um, that's how I, I really got to understand what you guys are going through. Mm -hmm. But I'll give, I'll give you another example. We went to uh, Hootie and the Blowfish Golf Tournament yeah. last week, and they have the, the van there, prostate cancer screening. Mm -hmm. And what I looked at was there was about 150, almost 200 people there going through the cancer screening process right. through the van, but not one black. Not, not, one not a black, single black. Not one black. Yeah. And that kind of hurt me a little bit. Uh -huh. And I was glad that you had contacted me <laughs> so we could talk about this, you know, because, I mean, I, I see the, the problems we go through uh, in terms of we, you and I talked about it before in terms of the grassroots, mm -hmm. which we're going through that as major league players in mm -hmm. terms of trying to get the young blacks to play baseball. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's the same scenario. They have no place to play. Mm -hmm. and, and the blacks have no place really to understand where to go to get screening mm -hmm. or, or other uh, tested right. for prostate, right. you know, the PSAs. Plus, the biggest thing is that a lot of them don't have insurance. Mm -hmm. And those are things that I, I, I know for a fact that you, the challenge you're going through. Th those are uh, real uh, obstacles. Yeah, and, and, uh, and it's it not, not fun because, you know, you, you sit there and you say, why, why can't they... Yeah, right. But it, it's not as easy as it, as it seems. Right. And a friend of mine, the, the, the National Prostate Cancer Coalition, his name is Jamie Beard, I think you know Jamie, yes. uh -huh. um, is going to the south side of Chicago this next week. Mm -hmm. And he wanted me to be there, but the problem is I still work. <laughs> so I wasn't able to do that. Right. But this, this whole thing, I think, more important than anything is the fact that just getting the word out making sure that they understand that you have, you know, in order to defeat this epidemic, mm -hmm. you have to get it early. And mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing. Right. Early detection is the key. And uh, that they understand that the prostate gland is a sex organ. You know, right. a lot of men don't understand yet that the prostate cancer, the prostate gland is a sex organ. And the prostate health is important for sexual health. Uh, and sometimes I see men who say, well, I don't think I need to be tested. Uh, I don't think I need to do a digital rectal exam. But once they understand that prostate health means sexual health, then men look at it differently. And uh, it, it's so important to have you and men like you to... to